Hello everyone and welcome to The Sims Lore. Today we're looking into probably one of the biggest dramas within the neighborhood of Lucky Palms. So grab your snacks and let's see who cheated on who. Don't forget to subscribe and like this if you enjoyed it. Alright, let's get straight into the video. Rest and Relaxation is the name of the game at The Sims 3 Lucky Palms. With ample parks, recreation locales, and a thriving culinary scene, you'll find yourself on an oasis of green amid shifting sands. This desert enclave offers manicured gardens, modern estates, and cozy abodes nestled on the banks of a pristine lake. At the heart of town lies a mysterious well that is said to grant wishes to those who are pure of heart. What will you wish for? Lucky Palms is a neighborhood that was first available to purchase from The Sims 3 store in 2012. It's a resort type of place based on the real-life city of Palm Springs in California. Within the neighborhood, there are 50 residents, some of which hold some secrets. There is a clear class divide between the residents, visually by looking at the town center, which is filled with palm trees, green lawns, and plenty for Sims to do. Moving upwards by the lake is the Gulf View mansions and estates, which are the most expensive in town. This is also home to the Blooming Cactus Bistro, which has the most amazing views of the city, canyons, and river. Towards the other side of the river and the edge of town is Sunset Boulevard, which has more moderately priced homes and lots. The lake homes are probably the cheapest, but also the smallest homes in Lucky Palms. Towards the edge of the city, across the highway, there is what appears to be a separate neighborhood. There are a few properties that look like they've been converted to homes from maybe diners and gas stations. So now that we have a pretty good idea of the layout, let's have a look at the first household involved in what looks like a pretty messy drama. The lover's household is made up of Eli Vokoban and Lena Lancaster. The household bio reads, Eli is a lifelong ladies man and his current lady is the lovely and much younger Lena Lancaster. Lena claims to love Eli, but neighbors whisper that she is only in love with his fortune. Rumors say that Lena is pregnant, but is Eli the father? Oof, that sounds rough. They live at 73 Gulf View Road in a two-bedroom, 2.5 bathroom home called A Bridge Apart, whose description reads, Meant to impress, this large estate on a big parcel of land is at the apex of an exclusive community. It reflects the type of success many sims strive for. We hope that simoleons can buy happiness, but if not, they can at least buy this mansion. Their house is in a very lavish area, the more expensive side of Lucky Palms. As you come in, the home appears to be very minimalist and modern. It has an open plan kitchen and dining area with views overlooking the pool and canyons. Going upstairs, there is a bridge-like connection between two separate sides of the house. One houses a bedroom and a lavish ensuite bathroom, fully equipped with a fireplace and hangout area, a desk, and a balcony overlooking the pool and river. It also has a downstairs living area, which we can assume is used for entertaining guests, as it comes with a fireplace, bar, stereo, and bookshelves. At the other end of this bridge-like corridor, there is a second much smaller bedroom with a chess table, bookshelves, computer, and small ensuite bathroom. This room also comes with a balcony overlooking the pool and river. Outside, there are two cars parked in the carport, one car clearly way more expensive than the other. So let's take a closer look at Eli and Lena. We'll start with Lena. Her bio reads, Though she comes off as shallow, Lena is actually intelligent and cunning. Lena is a young adult who has the Gemini star sign and she is flirty, a great kisser, a genius, a schmoozer and evil. Her favorites are pop music, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and the color yellow. Lena is a one-star celebrity, and her lifetime wish is to become a gold digger. She is unemployed, and has five skill points in logic, two in athletic, and five in charisma. She has the usual in her inventory, but also has two books titled The Mummy in Love and Murder in Pleasant View, which I think are direct link to her gold digger lifetime wish of seeing her wealthy spouse's ghost. 
Lena is best friends forever with Yolanda Shaw, is romantically involved with Eli, is good friends with Kitty Price, is friends with Tabby Claremont, Jason Hendricks, and Lola Lancaster, who is her mother. Lena is also distant friends with Lennon Sosa, acquaintances with Naomi Nita, Palmer Hayes, Roy Phillips, and is disliked with Braden King and Kadia King. So we know from her relationships panel that Lena has a mother. Interesting, we're going to have to take a closer look at her as well. Okay, now on to Eli. His bio reads, Eli has outlived three wives and twice as many mistresses. Eli is an elder, has the Aries star sign, and is hot-headed, a hopeless romantic, a snob, a light sleeper, and frugal. His favorites are classical music, key lime pie, and the color lime. Eli is a one-star celebrity, and his lifetime wish is to live in the lap of luxury, which he's 99,116 simoleons away from completing. He is unemployed and has six skill points in charisma and one in cooking. In his inventory, he has the usual, but also two books titled Seances and Six Sensibilities and Do I Exist? Eli is romantically involved with Lena Lancaster, good friends with Braden King, friends with Kadia King, Roy Phillips, Naomi Nita, Kitty Price, and Tabby Claremont. He is distant friends with Lennon Sosa, acquaintances with Jenny Gomez, Evangeline Finch, Palmer Hayes, and Beula Patterson. Okay, so from these two, we can definitely tell which property belongs to whom. Even though it's implied that the two who are romantically involved live in separate sections of the home, they might also share a bedroom if the player chooses to. If not sharing, it definitely makes more sense for Lena to get the more lavish side of the house, as she is a gold digger and also a schmoozer, so she would benefit from the entertaining area as well. So what's the big drama? Well, as the bio mentions, Lena is pregnant. We don't really know who the father is at first, but we know it's heavily implied it's not Eli's. After you play for a while, and when the baby is born, we can then clearly tell the father is rich boy Jason Hendricks. So you know what's next. Let's have a look at him. His household bio reads, A confirmed bachelor for life, Jason works hard and plays harder. He loves fast cars, beautiful women, and a well-made grilled cheese sandwich. Can he continue to grow his father's business empire, or will his playboy ways cost him everything? Jason lives at 67 Golf View Road in a one-bedroom, 1.5 bathroom called Casa Zanadu, whose description reads, it's all about fun in this large one bedroom with pool and spa that makes a stately pleasure dome for any Kubla Khan. Jason's bio reads, Born with a silver spoon in his mouth, everything has always come easy to Jason. Jason is a young adult who has the Pisces star sign and he is flirty, a great kisser, has commitment issues, is a vehicle enthusiast and is childish. His favorites are pop music, autumn salad and the color yellow. Jason's lifetime wish is to be swimming in cash, which he is 50,000 simoleons away from completing. He is a report processor in the business career, which he clearly had a head start in considering his father has a business empire. Jason has three skill points in athletic, five in charisma, three in guitar, and one in handiness. In his inventory, he has the usual, but also a guitar and two books titled Commitment Issues and The Mummy in Love. He is good friends with Lennon Sosa, friends with Lena Lancaster, distant friends with Marisol Loera and Kitty Price, acquaintances with his boss Daniela Henning, exes with Yolanda Shaw, disliked with Kadia and Braden King, and exes with none other than Lola Lancaster, Lena's mother. Okay, things are starting to get pretty interesting. And just you guys wait, it'll get even better. Let's have a look at Jason's house. From the outside, it's very modern. He has a garage and two cars parked out front. There's also another car in the garage as well. Going inside, there's the living room equipped to the foosball table, seating area, an easel, and the whole space has views of the pool and surrounding areas. Through to the dining room, there is a bar and a kitchen. Coming into Jason's bedroom, there is a TV, couch, desk with a computer, a dresser, and views of his pool and hot tub in his backyard. Coming outside at the back, he has some patio furniture, a pool, a little fountain, and a fire pit. The whole house also has two bathrooms. 
Okay, I really want to take a look at Lola Lancaster, Lena's mom. There's got to be some crazy backstory there for her involvement with her daughter's baby daddy. Dazzling former showgirl Lola has been entertaining a steady string of gentlemen since the untimely and according to the police accidental death of her husband. But one affair may have gone too far. Pregnant and in love with a married man, what's a girl to do? Oh my god, who came up with this? This is gold! So let's start from the beginning. We know this much. Lola's husband, Rico, allegedly died accidentally of electrocution and he is buried in the Sunwest graveyard. Next, Lola has been entertaining several men since her husband's death. And she's pregnant with a married man's child? Okay, let's look at this closer. Lola lives at the other side of town, opposite the highway, in a much poorer neighborhood than her daughter. She lives at 125 Lakeside Drive in a loft home called The Lido. Her bio reads, The lovely Lola once tangoed with Nick Alto and his brother Bart. Clearly, this must have been a mistake because Nick Alto's brother's name is Bert Alto. This is the Alto that is hiding out in Hidden Springs, by the way. I wonder if Lena Lancaster is actually the daughter of either Nick or Bert Alto. Lola is an adult, is a one-star celebrity, and has the Pisces star sign. She is flirty, a great kisser, a kleptomaniac, a heavy sleeper, and a schmoozer. Her favorites are classical music, vegetarian grilled salmon, and the color red. Her lifetime wish is the same as her daughter's to become a gold digger. I guess the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, huh? Lola is unemployed and has two skill points in charisma and one in cooking. In her inventory, she has the usual and a book titled The Mummy in Love. She is romantically involved with her neighbor and married man Richard Irwin. She is friends with her neighbor Barry Gilbert, her daughter Lena, distant friends with her neighbors Taj and Zara Diwan, distant friends with Yolanda Shaw, acquainted with Cornelius Van Dien, disliked with Roman Tanner, Emmy Irwin, and exes with Jason Hendricks and Lennon Sosa. Let's take a look at her house. At first glance, it looked like it used to be a small cinema or theater, but was later converted into a home. When you go inside, you can definitely see Lola's past as a showgirl. The loft's living room has a star wallpaper and red curtains. There's two sofas, a TV, and a desk with an old computer, a treadmill, and some bookshelves. Up the stairs is the bedroom, which is all decorated with the same star pattern wallpaper, and this time, the pattern is on the floor and stairs as well. The same pattern can also be seen on the kitchen chair cushions, and the loft has only one bathroom. What I'm sure you're all dying to know is the married man story. So let's take a look at them. The Irwin's household bio reads, Unemployed, unreliable, and unfaithful Richard is hardly a good role model. And though beautiful Emmy Irwin is deeply troubled and working on the wrong side of the law, is there any hope for their daughter to have a normal childhood? The Irwins live at 130 Lakeside Drive in a two-bedroom, two-bathroom home named Super House, whose description reads, Recently updated, this wonderful home features plentiful off-street parking and a fenced-in asphalt play area. Before we look at them, let's have a look at their house. The architecture is pretty interesting. This could have been like a diner or something in the past and was then converted into a residence. This theory checks out since there's a few parking spaces and a fenced area where the bins would have probably been kept, which is now a cemented play area for poor Cricket. Inside, it's pretty small with a living and kitchen area, two bathrooms, Cricket's room, which still has all of her baby stuff, there's a crib, a high chair and a potty, and then you have the parents' room, which overlooks the street. Richard's bio reads, Richard always thinks of himself first and others second. Richard is in his late young adult years, has the Gemini star sign and is flirty, has commitment issues, is neat, a schmoozer and a mooch. His favorites are pop music, dim sum and the color spiceberry. Richard's lifetime wish is to become a heartbreaker and he had two partners out of 10. He is unemployed and has one skill point in athletic and four in charisma. In his inventory, he has the usual, but also two books titled The White Wall and Woohoo in the Wastelands. Huh, that's pretty fitting. 
He is romantically involved with Lola Lancaster, is good friends with Barry Gilbert, is friends with his daughter Cricket, has an okay relationship with his wife Emmy, is distant friends with Zara Dewan, acquaintances with Cornelius Van Dien, disliked with Taj Dewan, and exes with Yolanda Shaw. Guys, I mean, remind you of anyone? You know, Don, Ruben, and this guy should form a club. It should be called the Pieces of Shit Club. I'm sure as we go along in the lore of other towns and families, we'll find more pieces of shit to join. Okay, so let's look at his wife, Emmy. Her bio reads, Emmy has a big heart and a broken brain. Wow, okay then. Emmy is in her mid-young adult years and has the Aries star sign, and she is insane, neurotic, family-oriented, inappropriate, and a coward. Her favorites are classical music, dim sum, and the color red. Emmy's lifetime wish is to become the emperor of evil, and she is employed as a thug in the criminal career. Emmy has one skill point in logic, two in athletic, and one in handiness. In her inventory, she has the usual, but also a book titled The Warlock of Palladia. She is friends with Taj Diwan and her daughter Cricket, has an okay relationship with her husband Richard, is distant friends with Zara Diwan, acquaintances with Cornelius Van Dien and her boss Kinsley Hudson, and she is disliked with Lola Lancaster and Yolanda Shaw, who is her husband's ex. So Emmy is clearly troubled. I feel so bad for her that she's in this horrible relationship with an awful man. I feel even worse for their child, Cricket. Okay, so you've now all got to go and save them in your game because they deserve a better life. I was so happy to see so many comments on the Polly Maloney video and how you guys wanted to just go into your game and give her a better life. I think this definitely applies here, so go and save them. All right, let's look at Cricket now. Maybe there's a silver lining. Her bio reads, Cricket has a cute name and a sweet disposition. Cricket is a few days away from becoming a teen and she has the Scorpio star sign. She is a slob, inappropriate and artistic. Her favorites are classical music, dim sum and the color red. Cricket is an elementary school student with an overall grade of C and she has no skills yet. In her inventory, she carries a digital camera, an umbrella, a bear, and a children's book titled Jimmy Sprocket and the Mummy's Curse. I definitely think that since she's a few days away from becoming a teenager, what you could do is have her sell all of her possessions and maybe also secretly sell all this baby stuff in her room, and she could just move out. She could get away from all of that. That's only if Emmy refuses to go with her. I mean, Emmy's relationship with Richard isn't too bad, but maybe it could get worse if she found out he's cheating. So let's look at the whole story. Lola is Lena's mom. Lola was once involved with the Alto brothers and she probably killed her husband Rico by electrocuting him. Rico wasn't Lena's father because if he was, he would show up in the family tree. Something tells me it has to be one of the Alto brothers, but I'm not too sure. Lola then began having loads of relationships and affairs, one of which was with Lena's friend Jason Hendricks. Lola probably tried to marry and kill him so she could fulfill her lifetime wish. When he caught on, they broke up. Lena moved in with Eloy at some stage, who also has a pretty juicy past where it's said that he outlived three wives and twice as many mistresses. This isn't reflected in his relationships panel, nor is there anyone with the second name of Vokoban buried in the cemetery. Sometime along the way, Lena cheated on Eli, even though they're not actually a couple, but they seem to love each other. Anyway, because of this, she became pregnant with Jason's baby. This is such a fantastic story to me because so many things can happen from here. You can have Lena stay with Eli and have them get married, Eli never finds out about the baby and they live happily ever after. Well, until Eli's accidental drowning or electrocution or something. You could also have her leave Eli for Jason and have them raise their baby together and live happily ever after. Until Jason's accidental death. Lola's story could also go in so many different ways. She could stay with Richard, again until he accidentally dies, However, she wouldn't be inheriting much. Or she could find another rich guy and make her fortune that way. 
Either way, those kids will turn out just fine. Right? Alright guys, there you have it. Lots of info on this huge drama in Lucky Palms. I'd like to thank my patrons Negative Dana, Papa Khan, Leo Thompson, Artsy Flashback, Nathan Lim, Caitlin Luigi, Mr. Netch, A Wild Kitty Cat, Keita John the Arcane Archer, Carolyn, Andreas, Whitney, Hannah S, Amy Louise, Charlie, Libby Young, and Perlog Anwell. Thank you guys so much for supporting my channel. That's it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and let me know your theories in the comments below. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more lore and updates. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!